Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel. I come to you today on this rainy morning to bring a collection near and dear to my heart. My vintage pattern collection. I've been sewing since 2012 and at the time I was self-taught and craving vintage clothing in my size. I figured I can sew them and have multiples in many colors and not have them be as fragile as their true vintage siblings. I started buying patterns in 2013, interestingly enough from my now best friend Janie of Atomic Redhead. Then after that I would buy them from flea markets, estate sales, uh, antique malls, other Etsy shops, etc. Now Janie closed her shop in 2016 when she moved to California and would just had her entire stock just hanging out in her garage. Fast forward to 2018 when I got a text message from her one morning asking if she, I wanted to FaceTime with her and I was like sure of course I want to FaceTime with my best friend. She then proceeded to ask if I wanted some of her old stock to which I said yes. <laughs> Of course. And the rest, they say, is history. Now I have a lot of patterns. Like, a lot, a lot. So much that I'll be breaking these down by their garment type. I'll be starting with separates. So blouses, bottoms, and separate jackets. And this entire series will cover the separates, the suits, the dresses, the loungewear, and then the miscellaneous. First up, we have Hollywood 1573. And Hollywood Patterns was started in 1932 by Condé Nast. They showed starlets of the Great Depression era, and they ran until after World War II. Simplicity 3182 is next, with its three-piece outfit consisting of jacket, blouse, and pleated or not pleated skirt. It's from 1939 and is actually one of my favorites. I really, really, really want this hat. Just FYI. Another from Hollywood, number 895 from 1940, with actress Ginny Sims on the cover. It's a cute little playset and I'm very excited to make it. You know, one of these days. I love that it shows what findings you need on the flap. Not sure why, but I do. Butterick 1610 is one of my more fragile patterns, but it's a maternity smock with various collars. It's from 1941. Apologies for the amateur hour of showing the back, but what can you do? Dewberry 5411 is one of my absolute favorites. And not because I made my graduation suit from it or anything. You know, okay, that, that's totally the reason. This is known as a two-piece dress, and it consists of a blouse and a skirt. Simplicity 4527 is yet another two-piece dress. I personally like this one due to its collar detail. Let me leave you with some ASMR. If you didn't know this about me, I love a good collar detail but mostly sailor ones. Just something about them, you know? Simplicity 4606 is a super cute coat pattern. I once tried to make it, but I couldn't finish it before the event it was planned for. It now languishes in my works in progress pile, taunting me. When I first got this pattern out to use, I noticed something strange inside. This tiny little inspiration newspaper clipping. I thought it was absolutely darling that the previous owner decided to clip it and shove it in her pattern box. 
It's always nice to have a little time capsule on your hands. I mean, look at those prices. Simplicity 1322 is my most favorite shorts pattern. I haven't actually sewn with it yet, but it's my favorite. Any of you want in every single color. Simplicity 1093 might look familiar to some of you sewers. It was reproduced in the early 2000s as Simplicity 1692, but using a completely different block, it doesn't fit the same. Simplicity 1555 is a cute set of blouses featuring options for color blocking as well as having raglan sleeves. I tried to make this once, but unfortunately lost some steam. Simplicity 1403 is an adorable blouse with fun collar and sleeve options. I really enjoy the green coloring in view 3. I want that fabric in my life. Simplicity 4356 is actually a pattern I sort of overlooked. I was initially like, oh that's cute, neat color going on, until I went searching for the date of it and found an interesting piece of history. Oh, and this copy has a bond of guarantee. I should look up what it says one of these days. As I looked for the date, I found this clipping, opened it up, and read this. Now, admittedly, I had to go ask my grandmother what year this was from, as I hadn't been in a history class for a long time. But I found it fascinating that the previous owner kept it as a collar piece. McCall 6569 is one of my dream blouses. I mean, look at those sleeves. I don't recall how I acquired this pattern, but I enjoyed the simplistic button up back. Amateur hour again, but look at the pattern for those sleeves. Oh my goodness, they're ridiculous. I love them. If I ever acquire some nice silk, I think I'll make this blouse. And once again, them sleeves. Simplicity 2017 is a cute basic shorts pattern. It's dated 1946, and I think they look absolutely adorable on a bike or pair it with some roller skates. Simplicity 2382 is a pattern I won in a contest that my friend Marie was holding a few years ago. I've made a couple of blouses with this pattern, and I absolutely love it. It's very simplistic and goes with literally any and everything. Now, let's take a moment and just adore this round collar for a second. McCall 1406 is a smock blouse pattern from 1948. I got this in a box of sewing patterns and other sewing sundries that I picked up at a vintage flea market. The detail is absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to try this out. Simplicity 2343 is another button back blouse pattern from 1948. I want to make the round call view. I think it's adorable. Advance 4448 is a fascinating blouse pattern from 1948. The yoke and sleeve details are absolutely to die for. Advance 4277 is a cute peasant blouse variant from 1948. I have a fondness for the traditional peasant blouse, and seeing the variations made me quite happy. McCall 7238 is a rather interesting blouse pattern from 1948. The mm, tuxedo-esque look about it makes it super unique, I think.
And there it is, copyright 1948. Simplicity 3941 is a cute quintessential 50s blouse. The wide collar is what does it for me. It includes a cummerbund pattern, as it seems they were all the rage in the 50s for some reason. Just look at how cute it is. Simplicity 4292 is one of my tried and true favorites. I've made the blouse countless times. I think I need more elastic to make many, many more. The skirt is a simple gather skirt. Well, the entire thing is just a simple to make pattern. I should try making everything else one day. I should peep the petticoat. Now I got this pattern from a flea market and I noticed that there was some lined paper on the inside. Imagine my surprise when I saw this sewing note. A student in the 50s used this as their project for class. How quaint. Simplicity 4237 is another cute pattern from 1953. I love the collar and the back yoke design. It's super adorable. And once again, Cummerbund Land. I also really like the sleeving detail. Sleeving detail? Sleeve detail. Simplicity 4746 is a blouse and short set from 1954. It would look super cute going camping or doing any other summer thing. Advanced 7944 is on my fall sewing list. This cute skirt is dated 1956 and was featured in the April Women's Housekeeping Edition. Vogue 8188 is a very neat jacket pattern. I honestly probably won't make it anytime soon, but it's cool. There is a suggested fabric that I had to look up. It's called Barathea. It's a soft, soft fabric with a pebbled surface. Simplicity 1692 is a fun raglan sleeve blouse pattern from 1956. I just can't choose a favorite blouse. They're all adorable. Can't wait to decide to finally make them. You know, with all this free time I have. Butterick 6620 is a simple and easy to make blouse pattern. I think if made in the right material, a knit perhaps, I can wear it all working out. Simplicity 2192, a simple skirt pattern. Well, simple if you like pleats. I can see it in my fall closet in a very nice red wool, perhaps. Butterick 7731, a quick and easy blouse from 1957. There's nothing super remarkable about it. I just really like the collar and the all-in-one sleeve. So it'd be a nice little something simple for the summer. Butterick 7886 is another quick and easy pattern. I got this from a flea market while out with a friend some years back. I really love the buttonhole effect on view D. Simplicity 2195 has a monogram sheet, which made me fall in love with it. 
I personally think that all blouses and shirts should have a monogram on them somewhere. Simplicity 7762, a super, super cute beach ensemble with a sunsuit. Something I like is the printed ruler on the side. Good for quick measurements. Simplicity 2196, a very simple pencil skirt that would pair perfectly with any of the blouse patterns. I love those sleeves. Just a simple one yard skirt. Simplicity 2511 is a varying neckline blouse that's simple to make. This model is staring into my soul and has many secrets. Advanced 9466 from 1960 has a one yard pencil skirt pattern. Nice, simple, only a few hours of machine sewing. Simplicity 3801, a cute two-piece set I got for a sale at school. I wish I could find some nice check fabric like the first view. It's really cute. The detachable collar and cuffs make it extra adorable. McCall 6413 is an adorable ensemble from 1962. I made the blouse pattern many times. Sans the bow and the bolero only once. McCall seventy six fifty from nineteen sixty four. A very simple knee length skirt. Butterick fifty four nineteen. I'm not exactly sure what year this is from. But I love it anyway. I definitely love the waistband detail. It's so darling. Simplicity 4935. A really simple, cute blouse pattern. Nice by a monogram. One thing I really like about old patterns is when people mark how much fabric they needed for the project. Ann Adams 7453 is a mail order pattern. Check that postage. It's a very simple blouse, two different styles, and I'm excited to make it one day. McCall's 4199 is from 1974, and it just screams 70s. Look at that hair. McCall's 8851 is from 1983. Here's something you shouldn't do to your patterns. Put stickers on them. Mm-mm.
that's all my separates. Hopefully there aren't any hiding anywhere. If there are, then I'll put like an adenum somewhere in the next video that I show them in. But next will be suits. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you didn't find this too terribly boring. I personally found it fascinating because I was able to go through some of my favorite patterns. Okay, thank you all. Have a lovely rest of your day. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.